What's up guys, welcome back to Stop for Garage. Today's detail is of a 2017 Honda Ridgeline and uh, let's just say this one is nasty. I honestly did not expect it to be this bad when it was dropped off at dark last night, but from these before shots, you guys can see how dirty this car truly is, but it's gonna make for a great transformation. So if you guys are new and like these sort of videos, hit that thumbs up button down below, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any new videos. And let's go ahead and get started. So I wanna to start today's video with mentioning that the mom of this vehicle has a kid that is a severe diabetic and has to have syringes and all that stuff available to them at all times. So that is why you saw all those needles in the before shots. But this detail will definitely be a challenge because of all the trash, all the debris everywhere. And the first step with any of my details is always to go ahead and get all of the debris out of the car that is larger than your vacuum will actually be able to suck up. And you don't wanna get a vacuum clogged, especially if you're sucking up this much debris. Once all the large debris is up, go ahead and start vacuuming out the entire vehicle. And if there's any plastic trim pieces that can be popped off, like this one in the rear part of the car, that middle piece, when you pop it off, you'll actually find a ton more dirt and debris underneath a lot of these panels inside your vehicle. I always recommend if you can pop them off easily, go ahead and do so and uh, vacuum underneath them. Once the rear part of the vehicle was completely vacuumed up, I moved to the driver's seat to remove it and get all the debris that is collected underneath it that you'll see in these shots here. I always get asked when I remove the seats, what do I do? Do I remove the battery? Do I do anything like this? For me personally, a lot of the times if the car is powered off, removing the connectors, I've never had issues in the past. Not to say that I will at some point, but for as a full disclaimer, you know, if you're uncomfortable doing something like this or don't have previous experience, don't do it, but for me personally, I've never had issues pulling out a seat from a car and having issues with fault codes or anything afterwards with plugging everything back in. I will say that this Milwaukee 3 8 inch impact driver is insane. Like, I'm actually super impressed with it. I definitely want to look at picking up the half inch, but they are uber expensive. After I got the front seat out on the driver's side, I moved to the passenger side, but had some minor hiccups and hangups there that I will tell you about right now. Is this thing fucking for real? All right, so here's today's rant. So the passenger seat has this funky looking anchor thing instead of a typical seat belt. Honda, why? I have no idea. Um, but apparently, you have to have a special tool to release this bad boy from it. You have to have one piece that goes in here and here and it's a special like key thing and it's not the key fob, look at this. You apparently need that guy to then release the seat. It slides in like that. Like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life, but Honda decided to design it that way. Anyways, it looks like without that, the seat does not come out. I'm just gonna have to shuffle the seat back and forth because Honda. Even though I'm gonna have to do the shimmy dance with this seat, I still am able to have enough room to get any of the trash and debris vacuumed up and this whole area extracted eventually later on in the video, but um, definitely an inconvenience, Honda. All right, so now we have the whole inside completely vacuumed out. So that means that now we can start working on some of the upper portions of the vehicle. We're gonna kind of work on the dashboard. We're gonna get the door panels done, but then the back benches and this seat that doesn't wanna come out, 
um, get those done first and out of the way. And that way when you're moving them up and down, you're not dropping new fresh dirt onto the ground that maybe you just finished extracting. Get those cleaned up first and then we're gonna move into the extraction in the bottom portions of the vehicle. And then getting into the cup holders and some of the stuff that's solidified in some of the door panels, like definitely gonna be using the steam cleaner on those things to get those things out. And by the way guys, that vacuum will be linked in the description box below. It is my new vacuum because the other one kind of got destroyed after uh, the Fiero failure project. Um, that one's kind of been retired because of the amount of feces that collected inside that one. Um, and if you haven't seen that one, iCard up here. Um, but yeah, the new vacuum is badass. And I'll have a link in the description box below. A surprise and it's fairly cheap on Amazon. It rocks. Drives me nuts when seatbelts don't retract. Drives me bonkers. All right, any goodies behind door number one? All right, let's get going. Now for the rear seats and the rear window, I'm gonna be using my bristle brushes, which if you guys are interested in picking those up, I have my own company called Fox Clean that supplies those types of brushes. So if you guys wanna check them out, I'll have them linked in the description box below. But also I'm using my invisible glass, my Chemical Guys Silk and Shine, and then my all-purpose cleaner, which is just diluted 20 to one in a bottle that I mix up myself. You'll see here for this like milkshake type like solidification on the front of this seat. I'm gonna be using my brushes to agitate the surface and I'm also gonna be dabbing the brushes at them because sometimes with the texture and the grain of some of these synthetic leathers, dabbing it, doing circles in both directions, it allows you to kind of get to every possible nook and cranny in that material to get all that dirt and debris pulled off. And as always, it wouldn't be a Stoffer Garage video if I didn't say agitate like probably 20 or 30 times. For pretty much every detail, a bristle brush in your all-purpose cleaner does a really good job of getting seats cleaned. But sometimes if you need to go a step above that, I have a specific drill brush attachment and I have a harder one that I use on my carpets and then I have a really, really soft one that I like to use on leather seats or cloth seats because it is less abrasive. So once the seats are completely clean with all-purpose cleaner, I'm just using the Chemical Guys Silk Shine to coat the seats, protect it from UV rays, and just give it that natural shine that a new leather would have. And the reason why I don't use a conditioner or protectant like you would see from a Lexol or something like that is because any new modern seat in the last 20 years or so, call it even more, has a protectant on the leather itself that's more of a plastic. They do that so the leather lasts longer, it doesn't get discolored with oil or water, that's why they do that and it makes it much more durable in the long run. One thing I like to do too is if I'm using my all-purpose cleaner, my protectant or my glass cleaner and I'm trying to do a section at a time, I always try to use different color microfiber towels so that way I don't mix and match and sometimes forget which towel I use for which one. It's always color coded, which makes it easier for you when you're doing the detail. Once the whole back part was done, I moved to all the door panels and went all the way around the car doing the all-purpose cleaner, the protectant, and then doing the windows last.
When I got around to one of the rear passenger doors, it had this green, like almost like Jolly Rancher look to it with a quarter stuck in it. Um, I think it was like probably lip gloss or something that was like completely melted in there. Um, regardless, I used a microfiber towel to scoop in as much as I could out. Um, and then I had to bust out the steam cleaner, which you guys know that I love my steam cleaner. It's so handy when it comes to some of this stuff like this because it not only disinfects, but it also causes it to melt slightly and makes it easier to wipe up afterwards. When I moved up to the dash, I kind of just stuck with using the steam cleaner because it does a really good job of blowing out some of that dirt that gets into those different corners and cracks. And you can use your bristle brush as well, but sometimes the steam cleaner just makes it a little bit more quicker. Um, but both are really good tools to use simultaneously as well, as long as you don't make sure you don't melt your fibers on your brushes. On the steering wheel and the seats and a few different spots around the car, there was this like white like substance that was coating everything. And I'm not sure if it was makeup or something else, but it was coating a lot of different surfaces that just the all-purpose cleaner did an excellent job at removing and it made the car shine like new again. One new technique that I picked up from you guys recommending in the comments was instead of just using the steam cleaner for cleaning up dirt and everything else in different spots of the car, utilize it when you're trying to clean your air vents because the air vents themselves get gunked up, they get debris in them, but the steam cleaner not only will blow them out, but it'll also disinfect them and make it a lot easier to clean them a lot more quickly as well. Till the very last hour We still got few more days to slay eh? It's gonna get so much louder Now we're here to take control Over your body and over your soul We're gonna take back everything and lose it all Lose it all, lose it all Feel it in your heart 
Now that all the seats, the dash, all the door panels have been cleaned, it's time to move to the carpets. And for the carpets, I'm just gonna do one last pass with the vacuum cleaner to make sure there's no larger debris that's gonna get stuck in the extractor. And then I'm gonna spray my carpet cleaning solution onto the entire surface and using my drill brush to agitate and get all that dirt loosened up and get it all lifted to the surface for my extractor to remove. And in the extractor, I'm just using plain old hot water. I'm not sure if you guys could tell or not, but what I tried to do was do one section of carpet at a time and also wiping down the different trim panels that were at the bottom around the carpet. They usually get splattered and dirty from the drill brush itself, but do those all at the same time in one section. It really made it a lot easier when I was going through the entire process. It was really funny that the center console in the back actually reminded me of the Brave Little Toaster. So because of that, if you guys know what Brave Little Toaster is, I want to see in the comments below the hashtag toaster because that was such an epic movie back in the day. So I'm definitely going to have to get my kids to watch that. And since this passenger seat wasn't able to get removed and was in the front portion of the car, I went ahead and cleaned that up first and used my bristle brush and the whole process that I used on all the other seats, moved it to the back after it was done so that way I could then extract that front. But like I said, I'm trying to do more of like a capsule type detail around the car so that way as I work my way around at the very end, there's no going back over all of the surfaces. It's just kind of done in each little section. Egg 
gets tough just breathing I'm alone but I'm still feeling like someone's with me It's strange I know Time is unfair, cause I know you're out there somewhere Patient, waiting, unaware Feeling like your grip might slip too soon But I'm running, chasing speed and gunning I'll be right there all of a sudden I feel your heartbeat lead me straight to you I've only seen this fairly recently, but I'm not sure why the, these frame number plates are being put onto carpets in newer cars or not, or if it's just Honda that does it. But I'm not really sure why the VIN number needs to be hidden underneath this little plate. But regardless, it makes it a little bit of a pain when it comes to extracting. But work your way around it if you have something like this as well in your car. Um, and definitely invest in some floor mats if you do have a vehicle, or if you need new floor mats, pick them up, get some nice rubber ones get anything because in this actual particular vehicle there was no floor mats whatsoever except for the one on the driver's side that was in the intro um yeah definitely get some floor mats it saves you a ton of time when it comes to this sort of thing um, especially if it's just minor carpet needs to be cleaned up instead of the entire surface And now the final piece of the puzzle is to clean the driver's seat, which having it out of the car, I've mentioned this every single video in the past, having it up on a table, easily able to get to all the different pieces without a contortion your whole body and making your back have a huge amount of pain at the end of a detail.
Now when it comes to reinstalling the seats, definitely use a torque wrench. That is something that I've mentioned in previous videos. And if you go online for your particular video, it's usually on some sort of forum and you can quickly search to find what the torque spec would be for your specific vehicle. But if you've never used a torque wrench before, definitely look at some tutorials online. But it's a nice investment, a nice little security safety when you're actually reinstalling seats to make sure that they're tightened down to what the factory would make them. Now, once I've cleaned the last little trim piece in the back and reinstalled it, I'm gonna go through the rest of the vehicle's carpet and do one final vacuuming of the entire surface as I get everything out of the car because this is essentially the point where you hand off the car to the customer. And it's always funny, I always find small little pieces of dirt that I pick up at the very end that somehow didn't get extracted or didn't get pulled off the surface in some other portion of the detail. But here are the before and after shots, guys, and this should be like the most motivating thing for you that if you can see a car that looks like this get transformed, you guys can keep your cars clean too. So I wanna thank you guys for being part of the Stoffer Garage crew. All of your support every week means the world to me. And if you guys are new, hit the subscribe button, join the family, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.